Good afternoon on this Sunday, March 29th. I'm Yumna Nofa. You're watching the English newscast. Here are today's headlines. Arab League Chief Nabil Arabi says a Saudi-led offensive in Yemen will continue until the Houthi Shia rebels surrender. Prime Minister Tamam Salam reiterates Lebanon's commitment to the dissociation policy and calls for distancing it from the region's conflicts. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu condemns the framework Iranian nuclear agreement being sought by international negotiators. Arab League Chief Nabil al-Arabi says a Saudi-led offensive in Yemen will continue until the Houthi Shia rebels surrender their weapons and withdraw from areas they have seized. At the start of the second day and final one of a summit in the Egyptian resort town of Sharm el-Sheikh, Yemen's President Abdurrabu Mansour Hadi had attended the first day of the summit, calling for the offensive to continue until the Iran-backed rebels surrender and hand over their leaders and weapons. Arab leaders also agreed to form a joint military force. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Sisi announced at the end of the summit by stating that Arab representatives would meet to study the creation of the force. The decision was mostly aimed at fighting jihadists who have overrun swaths of Iraq and Syria and won a foothold in Libya, Arabi announced ahead of the summit. Prime Minister Tamam Salam offered an ambiguous position towards the Saudi-led military intervention in Yemen during the Arab League summit in Sharm el-Sheikh, saying Beirut supported any move that preserves Sana'a's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Out of its keenness on supporting constitutional legitimacy in Yemen and supporting Arab consensus in the unity and stability of all Arab states, Lebanon announced its support for any Arab stance that preserves Yemen's sovereignty and territorial integrity in addition to cohesion of its social fabric. Those were the words of Salam at the close of the session. Addressing a audience, Salam was the last speaker of the night, voicing Lebanon's support for a political settlement to resolve the internal disputes in Yemen. Such a solution, he said, must be independent of any foreign interference in the internal affairs of Arab states. The United States is prepared to announce $500 million in aid for Lebanon at an upcoming donor conference in Kuwait, according to media reports. Future TV quoted Interior Minister Nuhad Mashnu might saying that the U.S. would pledge $500 million in aid to Lebanon in the International Humanitarian Donors for Syria, scheduled for this Tuesday. The conference, which will Kuwait will be hosting for a third year in a row, aims at collecting international financial support for Syrians displaced by war. A Nahar newspaper said that the $500 million would be channeled via the United States Agency for International Development, known as USAID. Reports, however, do not specify if the aid will be provided to Syrian refugees or vulnerable Lebanese communities, or whether it would be distributed through the Lebanese agencies. Lebanon, up till now, hosts 1.2 million Syrian refugees, according to the UNHCR. Hundreds of Syrian refugees who fled Iraq and Syria amid fears of sectarian violence attended the Palm Sunday Mass in Beirut. The Syrians are an indigenous Christian people who trace their roots back to the ancient Mesopotamians. Many Syrian and Iraqi refugees fled their homes and moved to Lebanon following attacks by the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. The sides involved in Iran's nuclear negotiations have never been closer to a deal than now, according to EU foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini. She arrived in Lausanne, Switzerland, and spoke to reporters, saying U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Jawad Zarif have been in Lausanne for two days to try to reach a preliminary deal by a self-imposed deadline of March 31st. And they held several rounds of talks on Saturday. Mogherini said the gaps remained between the two sides and was hopeful that they could be bridged over the coming weekend. Sadiq says the six powers, which are the United States, Britain, France, Germany, Russia and China, are now the ones who must compromise. Mogherini told the waiting reporters outside the hotel that as long as the common ground of Iran not being able to develop nuclear weapons, whilst being able to develop a civil nuclear program, then a good deal can be found. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is reacting and condemning the framework Iranian nuclear agreement being sought by international negotiators, saying it is even worse than his country had feared. Israel has campaigned against the talks, arguing that they would ease sanctions on Tehran while leaving it with the basic infrastructure necessary to build a nuclear bomb. The Iranians say their nuclear program is feasible. 
This deal, as it appears to be emerging, bears out all of our fears, and even more than that, Netanyahu told his cabinet in Jerusalem as the six world powers and Iran work toward the deadline in Lausanne. Noting advances made by Iranian-allied forces in Yemen and other Arab countries, Netanyahu accused ISIS of trying to conquer the entire Middle East while moving toward nuclearization. Coming up next, France local polls expect to deliver a boost for former President Nicolas Sarkozy and Marine Le Pen. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Future TV in English. France's ruling socialist looks set for a drubbing with local polls expected to deliver a boost for former President Nicolas Sarkozy and far-right challenger Marine Le Pen. A heavy defeat for the socialists would be a bad sign in the run-up to the 2017 presidential elections in which Sarkozy hopes to wrest power back from the leftist government that has struggled with a sluggish economy and high unemployment. Shortly before heading to Tunisia to take part in an anti-terrorism march, President François Hollande cast his vote in the rural area of Toul, where he was mayor from 2001 till 2008. Voter disappointment with what some see as Hollande's economic failures means Sarkozy's center-right coalition is likely to dominate Sunday's ballot after topping last week's first-round vote. Rescue efforts to try to locate the second black box from the downed German wings plane continue in the French Alps as helicopters fly to and from the remote crash site. So far, investigators have only retrieved the cockpit voice recordings from one of the plane's black boxes, which they say so that the co-pilot, Andreas Lubitz, locked himself alone in the cockpit and caused the airliner to crash. The chief French investigator said that it was too early to rule out other explanations for the crash, which killed all 150 people on board. The second black box contains flight data, which is needed to rule out mechanical problems with the jet. German authorities say that they had found torn up sick notes showing that the co-pilot was suffering from an illness that should have grounded him on the day of the tragedy. German Wings, the budget airline of the flag carrier Lufthansa, said Lubitz had not submitted any sick notes at the time. Voting began in the Nigerian capital, Abuja, and the country's main commercial hub, Lagos, in the first genuine electoral contest since the end of military rule in 1999. The tense race pits incumbent President Goodluck Jonathan against former military ruler Muhammadu Buhari, with an electorate divided along a complex mix of ethnic, regional, and in some cases religious lines. Polls were meant to open for accreditation at 120,000 ballot stations at 8 in the morning, with actual voting starting at 1.30 p.m. and continuing until the last person had voted. Problems emerged as scanners failed to recognize some cards and fingerprints across the country, including that of Jonathan, who waited more than 40 minutes as officials vainly tried to get four different machines to work. Police reported attacks by Boko Haram insurgents in Yobi State, where three people are said to have been shot dead as they walked to a polling station and another three in a similar attack in Gombe State. The lights on New York's Empire State Building were turned off to mark Earth Hour, an annual campaign to raise awareness about climate change. Beginning at 8.30 p.m. New York time, the lights on the iconic building began to dim until they were completely off. The lights went down also in parts of Japan, Hong Kong and the Philippines as part of this climate change awareness campaign spanning multiple cities around the world. In Japan, the capital city's iconic Tokyo Tower was plunged into darkness to mark Worldwide Fund Earth Hour. The global campaign encourages individuals and businesses to turn off non-essential lights for one hour from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. locally on the last Saturday of March as a symbol for their commitment to raising awareness for the climate change. Earth Hour began in Sydney in 2007, asking households and businesses to switch off their lights for 60 minutes. The traditional green slime flowed at the Kids' Choice Awards, but it was Angelina Jolie's message of empowerment for youngsters that stuck. Jolie, who has sought to inspire women with public candor about her own health, said that different is good as she accepted the favorite villain award for her movie role as the title character in Maleficent. Other winners of the night at the Nickelodeon's channel Spans voted awards included Emma Stone, who largely escaped the slime, who accepted the Best Actress Award for her role in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Modern Family as well, whose stars, including Jesse Tyler Ferguson, didn't get away clean. These are the headlines. Angelina Jolie. Thank you so much to all the kids who voted. I want to say that when I was little, 
Like Maleficent, I was told that I was different. And I felt out of place and too loud, too full of fire, never good at sitting still, never good at fitting in. And then one day I realized something, something I hope you all realize. Different is good. So, don't fit in, don't sit still, don't ever try to be less than what you are, and when someone tells you that you are different, smile and hold your head up high and be proud. And, and as your villain, I would also say, cause a little trouble, it's good for you. my hands in some slime. I had the opportunity, I had to do it, so I am very slimy. Um, this is so cool, Nickelodeon is the absolute best. Thank you so much for not sliming us, it's so sweet. Thank you, this is so great, we're, um, we'll definitely keep doing what we're doing, we love Modern Family. You guys rock, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. This is unbelievable. Thank you. I've, I've had a script all night, and in this moment I don't, so I'm going to speak from my heart real quick. I love you fans. You're the best in the world. And I'm so thankful that you've come on this journey with me and given me this amazing award. So thank you. I love you. And thanks for letting me be your host. Thank you. It's time. It's happening. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Well, that's all you got for the host of the show? Come on. marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. Arab League Chief Nabil al-Arabi says a Saudi-led offensive in Yemen will continue until the Houthi Shia rebels surrender their weapons. Prime Minister Tamam Salam reiterates Lebanon's commitment to the dissociation policy and calls for distancing itself from the region's conflicts. And world powers cannot agree on a Iran deal, yet they say it is looming soon. Those are your headlines live on Future Television on this Palm Sunday. Have a very happy Palm Sunday, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.